Well, now to a story about a beautiful mind. When Professor Terry Tao became the first Australian to win the most prestigious prize in international mathematics, the Fields Medal, it was a tribute not only to his exceptional skills, but to his parents and his many teachers who knew exactly how to develop a special talent. And those who helped nurture Terry Tao now compare him with the greats. They say he's in the same league as Sir Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. Now, while most people will never fully appreciate his theories, Terry Tao's work looks like having universal application and becoming part of history. Scott Bevan reports. As long as I can remember, I've, I've always loved numbers, like patterns, that helps explain things about how the world works. You know, you, you, um, it, 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 it makes you feel sort of, it, it can sharpen your thinking. Mathematics is so much part of Terry. He's so creative. In mathematical terms, his, his work is a tour de force. It's the Australian Mathematical Society's 50th anniversary conference, and some of the nation's finest minds are gathering. And many of the 250 attending are keen to hear from a man considered, in mathematics at least, first among equals, Professor Terry Tao. These problems are quite hard and uh, quite old and still unsolved. So, uh, as well as delivering a paper, uh, Terry Tao was presented with the Society's Medal for 2005. Whatever the calculation is for Professor Tao's weight in gold, he must be getting close to it. For this slightly built 31-year-old has been receiving quite a few prizes lately. Very unique. <laughs> it was an experience I really hadn't had before, you know, having, having all this attention. Last month, the maths world's highest honour, the Fields Medal, was awarded to him and three other recipients at a ceremony in Spain. It's regarded as the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in mathematics. It's given for work that is truly, truly stunning and which will no doubt go down in history. You're the first Australian to win one of these. Yes. What does that mean to you? I don't know. Um, I would like to be an example that, uh, that Australians can, you know, can excel in, in just about anything. I think, um, you know, it's not just sport. Terry Tao's been recognised for groundbreaking research in not just one field of mathematics, but many. It's almost as if you took a, a world-class musician who could play several different, quite different instruments uh, at the highest possible professional level. This is, this is one of my results in, um, in number theory. Um, number theory is a study of things like prime numbers, which I use. Terry Tao points out this is more than squiggles on a whiteboard. They eventually make their way into our lives. This field is used in cryptology for internet and ATM security, for instance. And this one, well, it's all about partial differential equations. Um, it's related to the type of mathematics you need to do things like weather prediction um, to, to get your computers to crunch the numbers and figure out what, what, the, what the weather's going to be tomorrow. The professor says his theories haven't been applied to everyday living yet. We're just guided by a sense of, of what looks interesting, what looks beautiful, what, what looks... Uh, uh, like it would lead to something, um, uh, something substantial. And, and, and more often than not, you know, 20, 30 years later, someone discovers that, that that's just what they need. Terry Tao's own genius with numbers was discovered when he was just two. By nine, he was doing maths alongside students twice his age at Flinders University in Adelaide. And how do your marks compare with the older students? Well, they're, um, I get roughly in the 80s and 90s. At 10, he represented Australia in the International Mathematical Olympiad. It's been said that he's um, possibly the brightest of his age in the whole world. At age 12, Terry Tao came under the tutelage of Professor Garth Gaudry, who quickly realised what the boy was capable of. He started creating the mathematics in front of me, doing things which I have never seen any other student uh, come near. It was mind-blowing. By 16, Terry Tao had an honours degree. By 21, he had a doctorate from the prestigious Princeton University in the US. And at 24, he was a professor at the University of California in Los Angeles. Not that he believes his accelerated learning through primary and high school robbed him of his childhood. It just meant my, my life got sort of shuffled around a little bit. I did more academics first, and then I sort of socialised later. He is just Terry. None of this yeah. professor stuff. 
Yeah. I don't call him a professor, mate. You don't? No, no he's just Terry. <laughs> yeah. Younger brother Nigel Tao remembers life wasn't all about numbers. Yeah, we also watched like, you know, Jackie Chan movies and stuff together. Oh, yeah. oh did you? Each other up, oh, yes. Yeah. This is something he didn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't win the, uh, the Nobel Prize of Kung Fu. Because there is a, a lot of publicity about Terry at the moment, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to have an understanding that gifted children do need specific uh, support and input. Michelle Juratowicz is an expert on gifted children. She says the way Terry Tao's ability was developed is the exception rather than the rule, and accelerated learning should be better accepted in Australia. If we could identify more gifted students, if we could provide for those gifted students in an appropriate way, then we may have more gifted children achieving to their potential and achieving the wonderful outcomes that Terry has been able to achieve. So an ethnic progression. When he visited Year 7 students at Sydney's Kalara High this week, Terry Tao may have talked about maths, but many of their questions were about going to uni when he was only their age. Did anyone pick on you because you were so small? Or... Um, well, okay, one or two. Nothing, nothing, nothing major. Yeah, okay. How do you think you became so smart? I don't know what these things come from, but, um, I mean, but uh, one thing I know is, is that once you, once you, once you go to, to, to uni, so being smart is not really enough. You also have to, have to, you have to work pretty hard. You meet the smartest guy practically in the world. So to me, it was like, wow. Yet in spite of all the compliments, all the prizes, the joy for Terry Tao lies in solving maths problems and making life count. It's, it's just a really satisfying feeling that you've, 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 you've managed to do something that, that no one else could before and you've learned something, you've become smarter and somehow you've, you've made the, your colleagues smarter as well because you can share this with them. Yeah, so you get, there's a lot of satisfaction. Just as well, we sent the highly numerate Scott Bevan to do that report.